I'm just ripping down a few boards for our next project. A lap desk for a dear friend of ours, a retired school teacher. After ripping the boards to size, Kevin runs them through the joiner. I'm going to make this project out of pine because it's nice and light, just white pine. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to stain it or paint it yet at this point. The bottom is going to be just a quarter inch piece of plywood that will set into a dado. And the top is going to be hinged so she can keep some books in there, writing materials, things like that, because she loves to read and write. We want to say thanks to our cousin John. John's an awesome woodworker and has an incredible shop that we're going to visit in an upcoming episode. When he saw our shop tour and heard Kevin say that he'd been looking for another Delta router table, he brought us one he was no longer using. We really appreciate it. Thanks, John. Now we'll set up the router table with a quarter inch straight bit to cut the groove for the plywood bottom. I got to use my favorite tool, the planer. I love how pretty the wood looks when it comes out the other side. I've got all the pieces here laid out for the top and I'm going to get them ready to put biscuits in them. I like to use biscuits even though it's a small top, but it just kind of keeps things stable over time and actually makes the glue up a little bit easier. What I'm going to do is make some marks on here so that I know how it goes back together. So there's just one mark, there's two marks. I'm doing this a little more carefully than I really need to, but you probably get the idea. These marks can only go back together one way. So after I cut the biscuits and put them back together, I know that these will all go this one particular way. So then I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These seven boards will make up the top. Okay, now that I've got all those biscuit locations marked, I'm just going to go ahead and cut all these biscuits using a number 10. Okay, I'm gonna get this all glued up. Make sure I get some glue down in the biscuit slots. This glue bottle really is a good tool. I'm glad I got it. It's got a skinny nose that gets right in there. Biscuits and coffee. On the ends, what I'm going to do here is cover this glue up with wax paper. That way, these won't stick to it. And then I'm going to clamp these, clamp these boards this way so that it will bring these all flush in this direction. The, the pipe clamps are squeezing it this way. The glue is going to hold it. But there's a little bit of variance here that I want to make sure it stays flat. Now I'm cutting the pocket holes in the front and back to attach the sides and the top. Okay, so the top has dried. The glue up is, it looks great. And what I'm gonna do now, just to fancy it up a little bit, is I'm gonna put a breadboard edge on each end. So rather than see the end grain, um, we're going to see a nice finished piece of wood on the end. And the only end grain that will show will be right here. But it'll be kind of cool because you'll be able to see the tongue and groove in it. So I've just got my rail and style bits set up on my, uh, on my shaper. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through here. This will be the tongue. And then on the end boards will be the grooves. Now with my other machine set up to cut the groove in the end pieces, I'll go ahead and run these through. I'm ready to glue on the breadboard edge. I've just got it sitting in here now, but I think you can see the groove, the tongue in the groove. And besides just looking nicer, it will also kind of keep this stable as time goes by because 
It's not going to be able to warp as easily with these end pieces on. I'll bet you guys had no idea how fast we were. Freaky fast. I always like to clean up the excess glue because if you let it harden, it is a mess for the sander. Just a lot of extra work. Unclamp that real quick for just a second. Wipe the glue off and snug it up again. Kevin is sanding this project all the way to 320 grit. We've decided to finish it with a water-based polyurethane. The sides will have cutouts that serve as handles. We've made the layout lines and I'll drill a couple holes and then just cut it out with a jigsaw. After we sand the carcass, we will begin assembly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the carcass now. So I'll put uh, two corners together, which I've got marked very specifically because the back and the rear of the two sides have pocket holes to attach the, the very back of the top before the hinge. And then once I get these two sides on, I'll go ahead and slide in the quarter inch piece of plywood and then we can attach that last front piece. Quarter inch plywood will just rest in the dado. Before attaching the top is the perfect time to do some final sanding on the carcass. Okay, Kathy, we got this all sanded. By we, I mean I. Right, because I hate sanding. And now, all we have to do is nail the top down to the box. No. <coughs> it hinges, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So what we're going to do is actually rip this whole top, and then we're going to mortise where the hinges go. Oh. And then, and then we'll, we'll attach just this little back piece. And that'll we'll lift it up. Yep. It's so light. I like, I like this a lot. I think I want one. Should have told me before we started. Oh, it's so pretty. It's beautiful. Well, I'm just glad nobody got hurt. Oh, the other thing I want to do <clears throat> is route out a little, like a tray for pencils. <gasps> Good idea. Let's do that first. We've put a temporary fence on the router table and set it up with a 3 8 inch cove bit. Kevin's using masking tape to mark the starting and stopping points of the pencil tray. Now, he carefully lines up the end of the top with the mark he made on the masking tape, then pushes the wood down on the blade and runs it until the other end of the top meets the stop mark. Can you see it? Now we have to rip this beautiful new top so we can install the hinges. Okay, I'm setting up my homemade mortising jig, or as Kathy calls it, the Ezomatic 5000, kind of like the Bassomatic on SNL. And basically, it just has a couple of spacers screwed to it that, as I measured out based on my fence, and a straight cutting <clears throat> router bit. When I eat out all this material, it's exactly two inches, which is what I'm using as a two inch butt hinge. So that works out perfect and easy. The depth of this cut is only about a sixteenth of an inch. Now I'm going to move it down to the other end and do the same thing. Done. So after I unclamp this and just flip this up, you can see where the mortises are here and here. 
and there'll be a little bit more space in there, which is fine. So again, I've just got some plain old two inch butt hinges and I am going to lay them in the mortise that we just cut, which it's a nice snug fit and just let this part of the hinge hang down flat on the top and then using this self-centering drill bit, drill the holes in here, just a couple pilot holes. and screw it in. What I found works really nice as a spacer is just a piece of quarter inch plywood. If I sandwich that between the two pieces and then clamp it in, it's going to be exactly the right spacing so when this closes, the, the front part and the back part of the top line up. Um, this part I'm not I'm not concerned with right now. I do want to just clamp it in here. Another clamp. Kathy, clamp! That was close. This thing was about to bleed out, woman. <laughs> okay, we are going to attach the top to the carts. And the only thing that actually attaches is three and a half inches of the back of the top. We're attaching that with some glue and you guessed it, pocket screws. We've left an overhang of a half an inch on all four sides of this box. Okay, so now to get these screws in, I have this little angle uh, attachment for my drill and a shorter bit and then we're going to just go ahead and set that screw in there, push it up as far as we can and hopefully drive it in with this gizmo. Never used it before. Live TV. Gotta love it. Looks like it's working. Once we get the first screw in, yep. Kevin can go into freaky fast mode and install the rest. Just a little hand sanding on all the edges of this project and it's ready for a couple coats of water-based polyurethane. Upon final inspection, we noticed a divot. Just a little wood filler and sanding will take care of this. Thanks for watching us build the lap desk and thanks for subscribing. So this is all finished. I think it came out really nice. It's, it's pretty lightweight, just uh, white pine, and it opens up. There's plenty of room for storage in there. We have handles on either end, so it's easy to carry. And a little pencil holder right yep. there. I hope Jay gets a lot of use out of this. But you know, I think that this has use for more than just a lap desk. You could use this just as a, a serving tray maybe. Um, because you could put the things on the flat surface, but then you could put maybe silverware or whatever Good else in idea. here, napkins. Uh -huh. Take it upstairs, put it on the end table, and eat your pizza. As an Amazon associate, we earn from qualifying purchases. And as always, keep, keep your, your biscuits, biscuits dry. dry.